This is Kelly Garney, childhood friend of Randy Rhodes and co-founder of Quiet Riot. And you are watching DC's Daily Dose of Rock Music History. Hey guys, I'm DC, creator and host of Barside Jive, and thanks for joining me for my daily dose of rock music history. Today is Sunday, March 29th, 2020, and I'd like to welcome you to my COVID-19 shelter-in-place Extreme Isolation Tour Day 5. Remember, you can check out my Daily Dose archives as well as all my other content on my YouTube channel. Just search Barside Jive Live. I am coming at you live from the Vocal Studios in North Dallas, so let's talk some rock and roll. On this day in 1958, Connie Francis enjoys her first chart success as Who's Sorry Now reached Billboard's number four spot. Over the next 10 years, she will place 55 more songs on the Billboard hit parade. Dr. Hook and the Medicine Show got their picture on the cover of the Rolling Stone magazine after their hit, the cover of Rolling Stone, reached number six on the U.S. singles chart on this day back in 1973. According to the members of the group, they really did buy five copies for their mothers, just like the song said. On this day in 1975, Led Zeppelin had all of their six albums in the top 100 of Billboard's album chart. Duh. It's like my favorite band ever. On this day in 1978, after 14 years of marriage, Tina Turner's divorce from her husband Ike became final. Ronald Sell, a Chicago antique dealer and part-time musician and songwriter, filed suit against the Bee Gees, Paramount Pictures, and Polygram Records on this day in 1980. Sell alleged the Bee Gees' How Deep Is Your Love plagiarized two sections of a song he wrote called Let It End. Sell won the case even though the Bee Gees claimed they never heard Sell's song and the whole thing was a coincidence. The group would successfully appeal the decision in 1983. On this day in 1985, the singing nun, whose given name was Janine Deckers, committed suicide after the Center for Autistic Children in Belgium that she helped to found had closed due to lack of funds. Her 1963 hit, Dominique, went to number one in the U.S. and sold over 1.5 million copies, winning a Grammy Award for the year's best gospel song. Even sadder is the fact that she was unaware that on the day of her suicide, the Belgian association that collects royalties for songwriters awarded her $300,000. At the time of her death, she was only 52 years old. Beatles records officially went on sale in Russia on this day in 1986. Before that, only tapes were available on the black market, but most Soviet music lovers could not afford them. There was little information about the Beatles in the USSR, and official Soviet publications about the band were mainly critical and condemnatory. On this day in 1996, two former members of the 1950s vocal group, the Teddy Bears, filed suit in Los Angeles against producer Phil Spector and several labels. Carol Connors and Marshall Lieb alleged that they had not received royalties from reissues of their 1958 number one hit, To Know Him Is To Love Him. <music> 
Brian Wilson was honored in a three-hour tribute at New York's Radio City Music Hall on this day in 2001. Guest performances included Billy Joel singing Don't Worry Baby while Paul Simon sang an acoustic version of Surfer Girl. Wilson Phillips made a rare appearance, as did the Go-Go's and the trio of Carly Simon, David Crosby, and Jimmy Webb. Also singing Beach Boy songs were Ann and Nancy Wilson, Elton John, and Amy Mann. Brian Wilson himself joined the fun when he took the stage for the final three songs. Barbara Ann, Surfing USA, and Fun, Fun, Fun. Just like this show. Fun, 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 right, guys? On this day in 2005, Jonathan King, most often remembered for his 1965 hit, Everyone's Gone to the Moon, was freed from a UK prison after serving half of his seven year term. Wow. For four indecent assaults and two serious sexual offenses on boys aged 14 and 15. As he left Maidstone Prison, King said, I'm innocent of the charges against me. There is no issue of the acts being consensual. There were no acts. Wow. Tom Jones was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II at Buckingham Palace for his services to music on this day in 2000. And six. On this day in 2011, Ray Herr, guitarist for the Ides of March on their 1970 hit vehicle, died of esophageal cancer at age 64. A TV ad for Madonna's new perfume. Truth or Dare was deemed too racy for ABC Network Television on this day in 2012. Dressed in leotards, fishnets, and harnesses, the material girl was shown licking her lips while wearing black lingerie and a mask rolling around on the floor. <laughs> okay. On this day in 2013, a letter from John Lennon to Paul McCartney, written in 1971 during the aftermath of the Beatles' breakup, was announced as being one of the items being put up for sale on May 30th as part of an online auction organized by Profiles in History. <music> 72-year-old Norman Greenbaum, who wrote and sang the 1969 hit Spirit in the Sky, was critically injured when the car he was riding in turned left, crossing into the path of an oncoming motorcycle on this day in 2015. The 20-year-old motorcyclist was killed, and his passenger was severely injured. After a lengthy recovery, Greenbaum returned to the stage in Santa Rosa, California, on November 15th of 2015. Going up to the spirit in the sky. On this day in 2016, Patty Duke, who placed two songs on the Billboard pop chart in 1965 with Don't Just Stand There, number eight, and Say Something Funny, number 22, died of sepsis from a ruptured intestine at the age of 69. After a three-month delay, George Michael of Wham! was finally laid to rest in a small private ceremony attended only by family and friends on this day in 2017. Michael died of natural causes at his home in Goring-on-Thames, Oxfordshire, on Christmas Day, 2016. Also on this day in 2017, the United States Library of Congress added Don McLean's 1971 hit, American Pie, to their National Recording Registry of 2016. American Pie joins Judy Garland's Over the Rainbow, N.W.A.'s album Straight Outta Compton, and The Eagles' 1976, their greatest hits, as treasures worthy of preservation. 
And that, kiddies, is rock and roll and wraps my rock history lesson today, but you can dry those eyes because there is more coming from me to you tomorrow and every day as I peel back those pages of my big-ass book of rock music history and explore the past of the rock legends every day on my daily dose of rock music. You can catch up on all my Daily Dose episodes as well as all my content on YouTube. Just search Barside Jive Live. You can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Barside Jive. Thank you very much for hanging out with me today during my Daily Dose. Please seek every day to be a hero in someone's life. And guys, I will see you very soon. In the meantime, peace, love, and rock and roll. There you go, Boner. Have mercy. Good night, Bill. BarsideJiveLive.com That's BarsideJiveLive.com